We're starting with okay. Oh, so, well, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, uh, but this is this is preamble. We don't need to spend a lot of time on this one because this is uh, this is context for the next one. Um, so Jake Sherman says, in an hour and a half, House Republicans will head to 1100 Longworth to elect a speaker. I've never seen the House Republican conference so discombobulated, rudderless, and confused in my time covering Congress. They said uh, they'd spend the fall passing bills using regular order. Instead, they've booted their speaker and are warring over the next one. They are rewriting the rules of the election on the day... Um, the day of the election after criticizing states for doing that in 2020. They are taking the cell phones of elected officials when they go into the meetings. These are adults with staffs who are not able to bring electronics into party meetings. This speaker election could go a while, two weeks uh, now on an internal party matter with government fundi funding expiring in a month and change. So Jake Sherman is a reporter and this is him reporting on the state of the Republican party and mm. how it's just a ginormous shit show. Marjorie Taylor Greene retweeted that and said, all warranted criticism, which I am frustrated with. Uh, however, at least checking our cell phones has cut down on your live tweeting what's being said in our conference meetings, and that part I'm happy with. Not a fan of snitches. He's a reporter. Snitches? That's literally no, his job. Like, wait. Did, like what le hold on what stage of what stage of fascism is it supposed to be when you start getting when, angry about news media i don't i don't know what stage of fascism that is but it's definitely fashy because it's like the the news media is like when when a news person is commenting on what is going on in a political party and you refer to that as snitching like like should like is what happened to transparency shouldn't transparency be a thing like why like sh snitching should be the default for it should it not we ah, should be no we, we should know what's going on in one of the 12 the party early, one of the 12 early signs of fascism controlling mass media that is one of them neat glad to know we're there yeah Andres Pierano says, explain how evolution created a taste for music, nostalgia, faith, or even just the eyeball. Well, it created the taste for the eyeball because the eyeballs are high in calories. <laughs> <laughs> this feels like this is the, um, the, the comment from my section that I sent you in DMs where the dude was like, souls don't exist? Then how do you explain music? Like this? Oh, they... Yeah, I saw that tweet. Um, Jake4D says, LMAO, they are uh, taking their phones after most of them took them into the uh, SCIF during the impeachment process. Um, A real Republican so, hides their phone up their ass. Yep. Well, no, not not a, not up the ass, because that's gay. No. It's got to go up the no. dick hole. It's, it's ha it has to be up the ass, no, because we know, we up. know for a fact that gay escorts get a lot of money when CPAC comes to town. Mm, yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, he says, uh, was there an eyeless being that suddenly popped a whole eyeball or was the retina there millions of years before the other parts of the eyeball make zero sense? I'm like, mm. well, actually some of the parts of the eyeball did come before other parts of the eyeball. It was a process. Yeah, yeah. That we, we actually that know what the process looks like. Yeah. It's, um, it's amazing when we've got, we have two we have two things that have such short lifespans that we can actually witness evolution in real time. They are bugs and they are diseases. We can witness diseases evolve very, very quickly. And we mm -hmm. get to witness gen uh, multiple generations of bugs as they adapt to different environments. And we get to see those genetic changes over those generations because we get to see like 20 to 30 generations in a few months. Yeah. And uh, E. coli is another one. The, the long-term E. coli evolution experiment, pretty fantastic yeah. experiment. One of my personal favorites. Um, they've seen several things that could potentially qualify as a speciation event. And then the best is that creationists will respond to that with like, but it's still a bacteria. Like, bitch, please. You know, bacteria is the same, is on the same taxonomic level as like animal. So like to say it's still a bacteria though, would be the same as saying that like, an elephant and uh, a fish are the same thing. Because they're still animals, though. Rhino, you're still a eukaryote. Yeah. Uh, Jethro <laughs> Elfman says, eyeballs are high in calories, LOL, worth a tip. But just the tip. Only the tip. Only the tip. Uh, Mark E. Spen, something, something. 
Apparently I zoomed in too far, so we can't see the end of them. <laughs> uh, really? How come we know that murder, lying, and stealing are wrong? If sin is artificial and subjective, then you won't mind if I take my gun and shoot you, steal all your valuables, and lie to police about it? I mean, none of these are really wrong, and it's subjective. Okay. He seems to have missed the point of the uh, apologist argument here. It's like the whole thing is that, like, Oh, well, if if sin is or like if, if right and wrong are subjective, then like who's to say that I'm wrong when I take my gun and shoot you, steal your valuables and stuff like that? It, it's like, like to say then you won't mind if I take. No, subjectively, I do mind very much. So if you're making me like me the subject that determines morality, then yes, I mind very much. That's immoral. Don't do it. So he, he kind of goofed on the analogy. Also, the. <sighs> I, I hate how long this confusion I don't I don't think it's confusion. I think it's deliberate. I, I have to assume it's deliberate. The confusion between subjective and objective morality is objective doesn't mean that something's right. And subjective mm -hmm. doesn't mean that something's wrong. Yep. Objective literally means that there is something you can point to other than yourself. Yeah. That's what that's what makes it objective. It doesn't make it more true or less true. People who follow the Bible as their uh, moral code, yeah, that's objective morality. They have an they have a set of rules, however flimsy, that they are trying to follow that is written in the Bible. It's objective. That doesn't make it fucking true though. See, well, I mean, this is one of those aspect or one of those areas where you can kind of get into definition fights because, like, my I, I would posit that objective morality does not exist because, in order for morality itself to exist, there have to be moral agents, there have to be subjects and that can act and think morally. So, the fact that morality's very existence is dependent upon subjects makes it necessarily subjective, and e that goes even if the subject that is dependent on is God. So for me, I guess it's the reason that I, I disagree with that framework for me in general is when I'm whenever I sit down and actually look at the way that morality is discussed on like the SCP, for instance, it's discussed as a variety of frameworks as opposed to just this binary thing between these two options. So like yeah. from an from an anti-realist framework, what you said is is true and also people believing in objective morality exists within that as well. But either way, none of that matters when we're looking at this guy's tweets. No. Because they're just wrong. Yeah, this guy's, this guy's just an idiot. Stripe says, can you name one instance of a group of Christians attacking and killing people and declaring it to be the mandate of God? Inquisition. Crusades. Hey, do you know the Spanish Inquisition still exists? Oh? Yeah. I, I, I mean, didn't they, expect that. They, <laughs> nobody does. <laughs> Hey, Cirrus. Yeah? I have something for you. I, I don't want it, whatever it is. I've got the clap, and I'm giving it to you. Who's got the clap? I do, I do. Please tell no. me you could hear that. I heard it. Okay. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> like, I don't uh, know. Has there, has there ever been a moment where religiously motivated violence has been, I don't know, pertinent in human history? Uh, hell if I know, but, you know, none of that's relevant today, for sure. No, of course not. But no, specifically Christians. Um, but like, yeah, no, there's the, uh, was it the Thirty Years' War as well? Yeah. And like, per capita, that's like one of the deadliest wars in human history. Let's see here. List of Christian wars. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, let's see the, oh, wow. God, even when I when I so it just pulls up the religious wars, so we get like the Greek War of Independence, Israeli Palestinian conflict, but that's not what I'm looking for specifically. Of course, the Western Holy Wars, the Crusades, then there were multiple Crusades actually as well to be noted. Yeah, I don't know. Can I can I name one instance of a group of Christians attacking and killing people and declaring it the mandate of God? No, I can no, name a lot. I can name a few. <laughs> Yeah, but you know this person can be like, oh, but they weren't true Christians, because a true Christian wouldn't do that, so by definition, if somebody has done that, they're not a true Christian. A true Christian would not eat sugar in their porridge. Uh, a true Christian would eat kosher, because Jesus said he did not come to abolish the law. A true, uh, all true Christians 
swallow swords because Jesus came with a sword in his mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's your kink, <laughs> if you need a sword in your mouth to come. Look, I'm just saying Jesus was definitely a voyeur. You don't get nailed by a bunch of Romans in front of everybody without we having a little bit of a kink. This is not the first time we've had this conversation. No, it's not. And it won't be the last one. Dave Rubin says people need to start making the connection between the genocidal Palestinian movement, Antifa, BLM, and elements of the Democrat Party. So, I... They captured the I, schools and institutions while calling the rest of us Nazis when they were actually the modern version. So, I have some very bad news, Rhino. What's that? Did you see the recent tweet from Chicago BLM? No. There's a bit of this where Dave Rubin has a point, actually. So, there are... There is at least one BLM organization, the one out of Chicago, um, but not small. It's got like 60,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, did actually make statements in support of not Palestine, but Hamas, and oh, specifically God. the slaughter of Israelis. Yeah. So, so, okay, so uh... to kind of clarify this, um, I've been seeing a lot of people conflating Hamas with Palestine. That is not true. Hamas is a terrorist organization. Yes, they do currently have control of the government of Palestine, but that would be like saying that when Donald Trump was in control of the United States, he then representing Republi all Americans. Like, Republicans are Americans. Those are the same thing. All Americans are Republicans because that's the party that's in power. Should also be noted so, that a lot of this conflict has been happening in the Gaza Strip and not the West Bank. And a lot of the efforts during the conflict have been solely for isolating the Gaza Strip from the West Bank. Yeah, so here's, like, I don't have a solution to the problem in the Middle East, but like Israel is running an apartheid state that it's severely oppressive and is, I, I would argue that it is genocidal, like not oh, yeah. approaching, gen it's genocidal. They, they want to wipe out the Palestinians. Um, they haven't explicitly stated that, but they may as well be saying that with their actions. Um, Hamas is explicitly genocidal. They have said they want to wipe out Israel. Yep. So, fuck They've them both. They are both, they are both the bad guys here. But, like, we got to remember that there are people in the middle here that are not Hamas and are not the Israeli yeah, government. Not, not They're everybody just is people. an Israeli militant. Not everybody is a, is a militant under Hamas. It's also and, important to note as well that a lot of the, um, a lot of the kids in Palestine have actually been raised because of the because of the environment they've been in, they've been raised in a like literally in a militant fashion, not a, not outside so, of brainwashing. Yeah, well, um, so uh, Sakura is saying arguably Israel's government is the worst guy. Um, yeah, from a pure power perspective and scope of retaliation perspective, like every time Hamas does anything, Israel retali retaliates like tenfold, and they're pretty indis indiscriminate indiscriminate about killing citizens like just normal people like not hamas members just people that happen to live in palestine mm -hmm. and so like yeah israel is the worst one because they have the bigger gun but like you give hamas the bigger gun they will become the worst one uh, like they, yeah, they're, they're fucking both they will be they will be worse not by they will be worse by matter of circumstance yeah the, the ideologies of both are garbage yep so, like, I don't know what the solution is to the political issues there. Um, ideally, like, Israel was created out of, like, it, it, it's one of... So I, I would say that, like, if, if you ask the question, like, of atheists, like, if you could snap your fingers now and all religion would just disappear, would you do it? I would answer that question with no. But I think the way Israel came about as a modern country, like, in the 20th century would be good reason to at least want the Abrahamic ones gone. Because, like, that was a combination of uh, religious fundamentalism from both some sects of Judaism and from fundamentalist Christians in America, with, with the Jews just basically being like, hey, God promised us that land, so that's ours. Uh, never mind that people are already living there. Um, and with the Americans and other Christian nation, or, well, Christian nation, nations that are largely Christian in population, having people running them that are like, hey, we want the apocalypse to happen faster. And the Bible says that'll yeah. happen if they take over Israel. So let's do that. 
It also doesn't help that Britain did a whole lot of double dealings to even make that happen in yeah. the first place as yeah. they were fighting the Ottomans. Yeah, but it's just like the history is fun. So it's it's not exclusive to this. It's like there was a lot more that went into it than that, but a significant part of Israel's creation was people that were actively trying to bring about the end of the world. That is worth keeping in mind when talking about like the harm of religion. And since there are Israeli officials who have gone on record recently and on Twitter saying that they should employ the nuclear option that they're not supposed to have, by the way, mm -hmm. um, it, I, they might be actually getting their they might be getting the, their wish a little sooner than they might think, just not the way they wanted. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and did did you see that thing where um, Israeli intelligence actually had advance warning of the attack? And they just like they were, really no so they so they had advance warning and uh -huh. they were told that it, like because because leading up to the attack there was um like they were pressuring the people in the west bank a lot like they they were attacking them first basically uh making their lives miserable just doing everything they could to exacerbate the situation and so they got a report from intelligence being like hey if this continues like we have good reason to believe that a really bad attack is going to come as a result of continuing that so we recommend not continuing that and their response was basically like oh well i guess uh the woke left has infiltrated our intelligence apparatus so i'm just going to ignore that that sounds like netanyahu's bullshit going mm -hmm. full power yeah so it's like fucking American republicanism has made its way into the Middle East now. It's like, oh, we're going to ignore credible threats of terrorism because it's the woke left. Like, Thanks, Russia. What? <sighs> okay. Let's move on. Oh, that's the, that was the last one. That was the last one. That was Sweet. the last one. That's a good way to end it. Okay. Oh, boy. <sighs> Life is frustrating and living it is hard. Yes, it is. Uh, some Brennis is pointing out both Palestinians and Israel Israelis are Canaanites, period. They're the same people. Yeah, that's like all the people in that region are related. The um, the ancient Hebrews were like they evolved out of Canaanite culture. The only reason that that so from what I understand, the only reason that there's a significant difference at all is because I don't remember when this happened. And I, you, I don't know if you remember either, Rhino, but there was a point in time where Judaism was just considered religion. It wasn't considered an ethnic religion. And then the category changed to it being a uh, a religion and ethnicity at the same time. Yeah. Well. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this topic. I have to go pack for a wedding. That's fair. So well, I hope you have a fun time. Thanks for joining me. I'm uh, hashtag sorry, not sorry that we didn't get to the Nazi story. I... <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. We both avoided dealing with more NIFB bullshit. Yeah, yeah. No, Steven Anderson is not a fun guy. He's banned in lots of countries, though. That's always fun to remember. He's banned in at least 34 of them. If you don't believe me, look up Steven Anderson, Rule 34. <laughs> And yeah, his buddy Tommy, Tommy McMurtry may or may not be sexually attracted to pumpkins. Don't go to TommyMcMurtry.com. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, see you, man. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability that Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here. And they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Jemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Jordan, Ravi, Giuni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagitta, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.